Welcome to Conversations on Faith and Family, a faith-based podcast for parents and marriages looking how to manage and balance life with greater ease and fulfillment. Here are your hosts, Manuel and Raylene. Hi, guys. Hello. Welcome on uh, to today's podcast. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're your hosts, Manuel and Raylene, and thanks again for tuning in. I know we've been uh, gone for a few weeks, but it's been for good reason. Um, it's actually going to be about today's podcast episode. Yeah, what we're talking about today. You know that we've always been people that have been very transparent and honest about our lives. And uh, we want to do the same. We feel and we strongly believe that any situation that we go through, um, whether it's personal or you know, you know, in ministry, church ministry, through family, whatever it is, any way we can help you or encourage you, we're going to allow God to use it. And we hope that today's episode will encourage you if you've ever uh, been in the situation or if you're ever going, uh, we pray against it, but if you're ever in that situation, we pray that this encourages you. Yeah. So, um, I would say it's been about 10 days, right? I, I think 10 days ago, I uh, we went through one of the most difficult trials of our life. Um, it's right up there, and I think a lot of us can go through it. Um, I personally lost my job. I was laid off at my job. Now, um, I would say, you know, I... I make the majority of our income. Yeah. Um, the God has blessed me to be a human resources manager. So that is my profession. I'm in HR, love working with people, really focus on employee relations. And um, I've been doing that for years. Um, just recently, the company I was at, we are more of a startup company. We, uh, you know, manufa- we're in food manufacturing. And we had a major client, um, essentially they were so successful that, um, they had an opportunity that they couldn't pass up that left a small manufacturing company like ours, uh, leave and be gone. And that left us in a situation where the company that was scaling up for growth had to take a step back and, um, long story be short because of law um i've been there for a little over a year um you know um, the really the situation was since i was in hr i had to do all the laying off i think i laid off before i was gone um i laid off about 20 employees yeah and man wow. some of them i had great relationships with and i had to pull pull them into a room one by one, letting them know that they no longer had a job, you know, at our company. And man, there was a few days where I called my wife immediately after that all took place. And I was just overwhelmed. Yeah, I think you called me on your lunch break. You're like, man, I just had the worst day of work. It was just so hard because this is people's lives. These are Mm -hmm. people's jobs. They depend on this money to make it, you know, a lot of these people are living paycheck to paycheck. And, um, you know, he was really sad about that. Yeah. And big, uh, I have high respect for any HR manager. If you're in that industry, because, um, it's a brutal industry, you know, so I ended up having to, you know, let go 20 employees knowing that more than likely my number was coming up to. So after I, had uh, did all that. Um, it's when my uh, executives pulled me into the office and had the same conversation with me. And that was about 10 days ago. Um, lost my job. Um, I'm the primary breadwinner in our family. My wife still, she works. She, you know, if, if you don't know anything about the podcast, Um, unfortunately the podcast isn't at a level where it can sustain our income. Um, so we do the podcast, um, outside of our full-time jobs. Um, this is more of, uh, we feel our calling and ministry to you. Um, so I lost my full-time job. We recently, um, had a a mortgage we have to pay. (laughs) So, um, we're homeowners. So, so, so all this, 
you know, you mm-hmm. lose your job. It was at about, it was on a Wednesday at five o'clock. Mm-hmm. Lost my job. The first thing I thought was, darn it, how am I going to pay the rent? Yeah, how are we going to pay the bills? How are we going to pay the bills? And, you know, in a lot of those situations, um, you know, the one thing I've actually been asking God to help me with, um, yeah, and which actually I'll go into a little more detail later, but um, at 5 o'clock I lost my job and I was driving home and I knew right away, wow, I'm, I have church service tonight. Yeah, and we're I, meeting each other at church and because we're, you get off a little later. So we, we actually meet up at church. Yep. So. And I knew that I had to take up the church offering that <laughs> night. So I was laughing when you told me. I was like, oh my gosh, how is this guy going to take up offering after he just got fired? But I knew first something off, else. I didn't get fired. Or not fired. Uh, not fired. <laughs> I, I get it. Let Trust me. Uh, as an HR Big manager, difference. I know there's a huge difference, but I also know um, it essence. could be used interchangeably. So I understand. But but I had to take a church yeah. offering. And yeah. I remember driving home, just got off the phone with my wife, thinking, Lord, how am I going to do this? Mm. How can I block out how am I how I'm feeling at this moment and be able to stand up and tell people, give them a hopeful word, give them a, a, you know, some type of encouragement and just do your will. And as soon as I said that, it brought me back to me. I feel the Holy Spirit share with me that story about the disciples being on the boat. And I actually shared it with you. And it's a word that I always go to, a story that I love, that I always go to in the middle of chaos. And the Holy Spirit always brings me back to it. Here are the disciples on a boat. A storm is hitting the boat. They all think that they're going to die, that it is so chaotic that they literally think they're going to die. But Jesus is at the bottom of the boat, sleeping. Now... I think, what was it that Jesus had that the other disciples didn't have at the moment that caused Jesus to sleep in the middle of chaos? I've come to find out that when Jesus was in the boat sleeping, he had so much faith in God that he knew where he was at that moment was where God wanted him to be in his life. That no matter what storm came around him, he had a purpose, he had a will, and his goal was to get it done. God is going to use the storm to shape his character, but the storm wouldn't get to him. Mm -hmm. And I think, and I believe Jesus knew that at that moment, and it has always challenged me. So when the Holy Spirit placed that story in my life, it was a real challenge to see what was deep inside me. Was I going to allow the storm in my life at this moment, which was my job loss, to really dictate my emotions Or was I going to be like Jesus who trusted and had complete faith in God and in God's will? And when I heard that story, I remember just saying, I'm going to suck it up. I'm going to go in. I'm going to smile. I'm going to do it with all my heart. I'm going to believe the Holy Spirit is going to be the one to sustain me and give me the words. And he did. The toughest part was being able to even just encourage people, minister to people, um, talk to people. Um, we're in uh, high high leadership at our church, so we're um, trying to encourage people. And, uh, you know, who, who knows what happens. But that was a interesting time of my life. You know, I was a, we had a heavy heart. Um, you know, we went through uh, a lot of time. You know, the next day I was up, you know, applying for jobs right away. Yeah, yeah. Well, even when you told me, though, like, you told me over the phone and I said, well, on to the next. You know, God God has us in his hands. And sometimes hearing devastating news, you're like, oh, my goodness. You automatically think of the worst. But 
sometimes God just has something else and yeah. things ha we come into, you know, different jobs or different seasons of our life for a reason. Mm -hmm. Who knows why God had you at that company um, for that particular time and season. And so I was just like, you know what? I'm a little nervous, but I know God has always taken care of us. He will always take care of us. And he holds true to his word and to his promise. And we've been, I mean, faithful givers since we were teen, since we were kids, teenagers, you yeah. know, I've, I've always given faithfully. And I know that all those times that I gave sacrificially, those times are not going to come back void. The Lord would always, it's going to take care of us and sustain us. So I always hold on to that, you know. And you know what? I, I told you after I lost my job, you know, I didn't feel panicked. Yeah. I didn't feel panicked. I didn't feel the need to panic or I felt this peace about knowing that God was working on something. Mm -hmm. You know, the job that I was at um, ended up um, really there was quite a few people in our church who ended up getting jobs there yeah. and opening a lot of doors in their life. Opportunity and, for them. Yeah, even some of them are still there thriving, being a foundational piece there. And I am very, very happy about that. But when I left, I just felt this peace that everything God was doing, God was doing it for a reason. Yeah. And even to this point, I don't know exactly why he's doing it, but I trust that he's doing something. Mm -hmm. So I felt complete peace. And so um, it was that Wednesday. Uh, thankfully, you know, that job ended up paying for, you know, uh, for the end of the week to be able to, you know, continue to find a job. And, you know, I was really just blessed, you know, through the process, um, there was five days where I didn't have a job. <laughs> I was, I was the breadwinner you were for those the bread five winner. days. <laughs> yes. I was the one waking up, helping getting the kids ready, the, the things that I wasn't Cleaning able to do. House. Cleaning the house. Yes. Yeah. He my floor. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, wait. <laughs> I was, I no. cleaned the floors. <laughs> Let I me just say, I got home from work and I see him sit on the couch and the floors are immaculately <laughs> clean. I can smell the clean, clean, cleaning solution, but I walk in and I go, oh, it looks nice in here. He goes, oh, can you say thank you? I'm like, thank you. I love my floors. It looks so good. So, And then I said... Me. Can you thank me again? Yeah, you're, can you give me some praise? <laughs> <laughs> but I was unemployed for five days, and there was a lot of things I got to do that I haven't gotten to do before. Oil changes, um, spend time with the kids, see them, you know, go off to school, come to school, be able to, you know, man, wash clothes, clean the house, clean the garage, things I got to do. But it was amazing that it was... So the, literally the second day of uh, unemployment, I went to an interview, and that interview ended up being a blessing. It was, um, I went to the interview, I was ready, I was uh, had everything prepared, we hit it off right away, and even to the point where after the interview was done, the, uh, the owner... I was I wanted to set up a second interview that later on that day where he ended up offering a position and it was two days after uh, my unemployment I found another job it was man can I tell you it is perfect yeah <laughs> I think it is perfect yeah. and maybe you want to share why it's so perfect well it's four minutes from our house wait how many Four minutes. One, two, three, four. You can literally walk to work. <laughs> I think you should walk. We'll sell the car. Ah, <laughs> you just we'll walk sell your, your car. Bike. We'll no, sell your car. <laughs> we're not selling my car. But, um, you know, his previous job, he had to commute probably, what, 45 minutes to an hour Every there day. and mm -hmm. then another 45 to an hour back, back. home, yeah. which he never complained about. Nope. Um, he actually liked it to, to, to listen to podcasts, to read his Bible, to kind of decompress yep. from work. It was like his hour to unwind or get pumped up for the day. So um, it was, you know, and a long 
an hour or whatever, and it was time that he was away from the house in the morning.